What's up tube tube? Welcome back to Loguido's Chop Shop, the second best gel blaster channel on the tubes. And um, a little while ago, a couple of days ago in fact, um, I, <laughs> I l leaked a little video of me down at um, Hardcore Blasters uh, picking up the new HSG V2G. Uh, so today I'm going to unbox that now. But before I get into that, I just want to say thanks to um, a couple of people who, who bought me coffees in this uh, Christmas period. Rod and Matt Humorous Hubris both bought me some coffees and those guys are legends. I just wanted to give them a shout out. Uh, thank you very much for the coffee. It's well appreciated. Now we're going to unbox this V2. Uh, so I went down to see... Kathy and Toby down at Hardcore Blasters um, the other day and I picked up this one and also Kathy recommended and Toby, Kathy and Toby both recommended that I get a full cylinder uh, from Kublai which is this one now I was skeptical because I generally don't like anything that comes from Kublai but I've been told I've been told this is good so I got it, and I've got the um, eight mm slimline bushes from Retro Arms. Also got them from Kathy while I was there. I got some other goodies which I'm going to go into, uh, which are going to go into this box. But first of all, and most importantly, let's open this box up and see what's inside. I know. Kathy put a great deal of effort into these seals. She wanted to make sure that I had the box sealed so that when I open it on camera, it's gonna man, that's a good seal. It's gonna be opened for the first time. There we go. Whoa, that is so bright. <laughs> that is so shiny. I'm going to have to adjust my camera. All right, just had to tone it down a bit. So this is what comes in the box. You've got the incredibly shiny V2G box, and you've got a little bag of accessories. First, I'm going to open up these accessories and uh, have a look what we've got. So there is a HSG. V2G tappet plate. So that's a specific tappet plate that comes with the V2G. It also comes with a mag terminal plate. Now that mag terminal plate looks like the spacing is for that of a Gen 8 style mag with uh, the mag terminals there. Obviously if you were doing a Wells or a MP5 or something else the mag spacing is going to be different so you'll require a different mag terminal plate but Toby did assure me that he does have more mag terminal plates in the making because you can't provide everything for everyone in, in, in the box, do you know what I mean? Like you have to the Gen 8 is probably the most common configuration, so that's what they've provided in the box, and um, that's what they're going with. If you need something different, then then soon you'll be able to get the appropriate ones for other different types of blasters. I'm going to take this out of the box. Ooh, sticker. Now all this, uh, all these parts. Uh, there's a T piece as well there. That looks like, um, looks like like a war interest style T piece. It's a fairly generic um, type T piece. I think that would fit the war interest uh, type stuff. It look, that's what it looks like. To, uh, actually, I've got a war interest one here. So. Yeah, it looks almost almost identical to the War Interest one. So if you got a a uh, LDT or whatever, that should fit straight up without too much issues. 
Also, you are going to get a nozzle. A nozzle which is specifically designed for this box. The rubber for the nozzle here has been provided as well. You will have to glue that on yourself, but this has been specifically machined, Toby told me, so that obviously with different blasters you're going to have different uh, lengths of nozzle. And so one nozzle, one size does not always fit all. So this nozzle has been designed with uh, enough space here so that if you do want to file a few millimetres off there to suit your particular blaster's uh, T-piece depth, then you still can do that and still push the rubber on and glue it on. And that's, this particular one's obviously designed for their T-piece, which should be able to fit most blasters. As always, as I was saying, the, the various different uh, blasters you can get are all going to have different T-pieces, so you might have to find whatever suits your needs. Now, I'm going to try and get this Kublai um, cylinder out, because I assume, being that they recommended this to me, that this should fit perfectly on that. It is an O-ringed nozzle as well. There is a uh, a pair, a pair, two O-rings that I can see in that nozzle. So that should be a nice seal on there. And I mean, what more? This is just from looking at it. It's, I I love I love all the that you can see all the tool paths. I love that you can see all the machining marks although it is very smooth um, it has been coated in Cerakote but a clear one it's 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 been coated in a, in, a, in a clear coat so uh, even though you can still see the, um, the tooling parts it is very very smooth and the surfaces are so well finished on the um, two halves of the gearbox that they actually like they hold themselves together without any screws it's a it's a perfect friction fit the two halves of the gearbox it's beautiful I like it there's your screws sets of M3 screws to hold it together inside here you see what you would expect for most V2 type gearboxes uh, there is a few extra little features that I like. I like this one here. It's got the little wire tuck So that when you run your wiring down here, you can tuck it down behind there so that your motor uh, Pinion doesn't tear up the wires When you push the motor in that's always a good one to have. It's got uh, Plenty of room for all the wires to run down here and up the back here Looks like there's a front path here as well, so that if you're running the wires for the mag terminals out the front here, there's plenty of clearance, or if you're running uh, all the wires out for a front path for whatever reason, if you wanted to run battery at the front, which is something I've seen recently, not only for AKs, but for M4s. Alright, what else can we see? Oh, and there's another piece, another piece in the bag, the spring guide, which is handy because I've um, had other gearboxes that didn't come with a spring guide, and you have to search for one that fits, and that can sometimes be a bit of a pain, so having the gear that you know fits already is always handy. Someone's pointed out to me that it doesn't have a bearing on the spring guide, um, I, I don't see that as a real big deal because you generally always have a bearing on the piston anyway, under the piston head, so your spring's not going to twist up and turn or anything and more often than not, a lot of stocks, spring guides I've seen don't have bearings on them anyway, so it's not a deal, not for me anyway. It's made out of a 
higher strength aluminium, it's a 7075 aluminium alloy, which is stronger than most of the other uh, alloy boxes. In fact, I think it's stronger than all of the other. I, I, I don't know of too many other gearboxes out there that are made from 7075, except for maybe the Retro Arms gearbox. I think theirs is 7075, but um, there's not a lot of aluminium gearboxes out there that are made to the same quality of this. And this is made in Queensland, Australia, here by a small business in Australia who are a really great couple, the um, Kathy and, and Toby down at Hardcore. Uh, if you are looking at this and thinking that that's a kind of expensive uh, for what I want, don't forget to look at it like this is this is Australian industry and you're supporting not only Australia but you're supporting our local gel blaster community. Like if if Kathy and Toby didn't have hardcore blasters, half the time you know we wouldn't have places to play. And uh, I think it's really important to support our local um, community and our local manufacturers and our local fields. I mean. I think that's very important that we that we look at that. I mean, retro do make some real good gearboxes, but I think Australian made is, you know, if we don't, even if, for example, there's something about this gearbox that I'm not fond of. I haven't found anything yet because I've only just opened it, but I can always go to Kathy and Toby and say, look, your gearbox is great, but I wouldn't mind this in the future. And they can make a revision. You know, the, 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 this is this is the first iteration, so it's not uh, it's not the end by any means. We can always ask them to improve certain things. So I think it's definitely worth supporting our local community and our local industry on these sorts of things. All right, I just I just want to I just want to start building this now I want to put this together and get it into something um, I, I know I've got some of these um, retro bushes and they are a press fit so they won't fit straight in there like that I will need to either press them in or uh, as I did with uh, the MK box I actually I waited for my missus to cook a cake and then after she finished keep cooking the cake, I just stuck two halves of the gearbox in the oven while it was cooling down, and um, and I had the bushes in the freezer, and then I could just uh, sort of press them in with my hand. But uh, failing that, you could always use a small press or just just a hammer and a punch with um, with something something softer uh, rubber underneath it just to support it, so you're not stressing the gearbox too much when you when you knock them in but they are a press fit so they will be a nice friction fit in there and they won't turn and you won't need to glue them in or anything like that uh, it always bothers me when people are resorting to gluing their bushes into a gearbox because that just means the gearbox is holes too big if if the if the um if the bushes can easily slide in and out of them then then the holes aren't fit for purpose, but uh, I'm gonna probably gonna. It's hot enough, so I'm just gonna maybe leave this box out in the sun for a bit and leave these bushes in the in the freezer, and then we'll come back and pop them in. All right, press the bushings in there. They're a very firm fit, so you will need a press or something to hammer them in or press them in or hammer them in. Alternatively, you can uh, use my, uh, this is not, it's not my patented technique, it's been the way you pin fit rings forever, but um, yeah, freeze the, freeze the bushes and, and heat up the, the box. They are, they are so flush that it's like, it's just, just perfect the way they sit in there. I'm going to open up this um, this cylinder from Kublai and uh, try and get in in there. So far my biggest 
drama has been trying to open the packaging. <laughs> She's going to open that up. Alright, got it open. This is a CNC single piece cylinder from Kublai, so there's no worries about air seals or anything in there because it's all one piece. Uh, and the uh, nozzle is a very nice o-ringed tight fit on there. I'm going to put some oil onto that to lube it up a bit to give it that nice bit of lube it needs for for a smooth motion. I'm just going to use some very fine machine oil. I'm going to use some uh, very fine like like a sewing machine oil in there because it's a very very tight fit so just lube that up. Now the um, tapper plate is interesting. These piece, these other additional pieces here are three D printed. So the 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 mag plate and the T are three D printed. The tapper plate is not three D printed. It is um, CNC by the looks of it. It looks like it's CNC out of a, a solid piece of Delrin or, or something, uh, I'm fairly sure. So that is a nice solid tappet plate, um, doesn't look like it's gonna break or anything anytime soon, it's got a bit of flex there which they all do. Yeah that's a nice piece, I thought at first, um, I thought that it might have been 3D printed or it might have been a a um, another tap of plate that was available off the shelf, but it is, it is actually you can see, I don't know if you can see, it is actually etched with HSG V2G, so it is a specific piece for this, um, and it I can see machining marks in it, so I'm I'm pretty sure that's CNC machined, so that's cool. Um, and as you can also see on this box, I. I may or may not have mentioned uh, before, you can see that it has been radiused in the corners here. I made a video not that long ago about why that why that is a thing, but uh, yeah, that's to make the, basically just to, to remove the single point of stress from a, from a hard angle, from a right angle, you, you focus all your stresses into one point, which inevitably it becomes your fail, failure point. The uh, the other thing I, I like here is there's no screw holes along this top piece here. So you've got a screw hole here, screw hole here, screw hole here, but there's nothing here. So uh, I've seen gearboxes where they've got a screw in through there. That's a bad idea because that breaks. And let me just have a look in here. So it is doweled as well. So you've got dowels here, here, uh, here. So when you do pop the when you do pop the two halves together, they do lock into place and uh, sit there nicely and they don't move. Um, I may or may not have mentioned the the, the um Spring guide is aluminium as well, which is good. Uh, it's also threaded in the back for your buffer tube screw, which is also good because um, I like screwing the buffer tube screw directly into the spring retainer. Just keeps everything straight and lined up. Uh, you don't, you won't have a tend some 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 of the uh, retainers out there will have a tendency to like move up and down a bit like that. When you screw the buffer tube into the back there and have that screw all the way through the back into the buffer tube, it just holds everything straight. So I like to do that. Uh, it's good that they've added that thread in. All right, got this cylinder to go in here now. Just pop it in here. Just it in place for the moment. Another thing worth noting is is that the um, the rail in which the tapper plate rides has been trimmed back that necessary amount for the purposes of gel ball which is cool 
also you have a, a, I think you have a millimeter or so forward to to get that additional tap of travel forward which is also a necessary thing for gel ball but you need that full travel let's uh let's measure that travel all right so About 10 millimetres, 10.5, 10.6, just under 10.58, between the front of the tablet plate to the front of the gearbox. So, the required amount, the required amount for a gel ball is about 8, let's call it 7. Seven and a half at a minimum, eight. Some glasses go up to twelve, ten. No problems. Easily get the job done. All right. Um, let's put some. Let's put some cool stuff in here. So I've whacked the uh, gate Titan in here. And I've used the screw. The, 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 the gate Titan actually comes with a screw to, to fix the board to the box. And the gate is like a really wafer thin circuit board. So it comes with its own little screw and washer situation there. Uh, HSG have actually provided a small screw to screw in as well however it is too long and it's too long for a reason and the reason is that you will find that regardless of what uh, whether you're putting in a, a mechanical trigger switch or a electronic trigger switch like the gate uh, or if you're putting in something else you might find it's got a thicker circuit board or various equipment with various different size uh, requirements so you can see um, the gate screw doesn't poke through the other side here uh, if you were to use the standard screw you'll just need to measure the exact amount of stick out uh, that, that the screw has and then take it out take it down to the vise or a file or whatever and just knock two millimeters off the end of it or whatever your required amount is to, to get that flush. If you don't get it flush you will have issues with your selector plate sliding across it, it will catch up on it. But um, again that's done for a reason because it's easier, much easier to take material away than it is to try and add material to your screw. You'd have to go and buy another screw if, you, if, it, was, if it was too short. Whereas having one that's that's a bit longer always gives you the option to sand it down or file it down a little bit to bring it flush. So that's uh, a good idea, and that's not necessarily required in this situation because, as I said, the gate comes with its own little screw and washer setup. So I'm going to be using that one. All right. Um, I'm keen. I'm keen to get this together and do something with it. Let's move on. Now I'm not going to go through the whole shimming process with you as I put these gears in, but I will tell you that there's some nice windows available here for checking your shimming and also here there's a nice little window for checking your engagement. Uh, on the on the piston from the sector to the piston and to me that's always that's well that's great I don't think I've ever seen that before um, maybe the retro has it uh, I don't it's it's yeah it's not something that's very common at all and uh, for me like lo making sure that engagement on that first tooth is perfect is a, is a very important thing because it's very difficult to do with half the box out you have to sort of be able to put the box together 
and have the piston sit in the rails properly and then see where it sits and that little window just allows you to do that so easily and it's um very handy I, I, um, I like that feature it's a good feature and there's your wire tuck there as well so that they don't get annoyed by the uh, insertion of the motor I also noticed that there is three main screws on this box there's your top ones and your front ones and stuff but when you're doing shimming and you've got to talk down the box and take it off again and talk down the box there's there's usually another screw down in here um, which uh, uh, after a while gets quite annoying of uh, taking it apart and putting it back together to uh, to just check on your, your shim spacing and stuff so so I like the fact that there's only three screws there, so you only have to undo three every time you uh, take the thing apart and put it back together again. So that's cool as well for from a shimming and teching point of view. All right, um, I think I'm going to have to I think I'm going to have to end this video here for the time being because the blaster that I want to put this into. I haven't reviewed yet, so I'm going to have to do that and then come back. Part 2 of the V2G from HSG. Uh, don't forget to hit me up on Facebook if you're keen on a patch, or if you like what I'm doing here, you can always buy me a coffee. There should be a link down below. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Peace.